Wacho Valley, a mesmerizing bike ride through the heart of Austria's vineyards, rolling hills, charming villages, and historic monasteries all along the Danube River. You could easily spend a week hiking or biking from town to town to truly take in the UNESCO World Heritage Landscape. In our case, we just made it a day trip, going from the town of Krems to Melk. Join us as we look back on our bike ride through the Wacho Valley. From Vienna, we took a train to the quaint town of Krems. On the main pedestrian walking street, there was a lot of activity with Christmas right around the corner. Most bike tours end in Krems or use pedal assisted bikes when starting there. Since it was late fall, which is considered the off season, our choices were limited to the heavy city bikes that you can rent using your phone. Because we were doing the route in reverse and following the river upstream, it would mean going slightly uphill for the majority of our day. So we had our work cut out for us. We could tell almost immediately that biking the Wacho Valley is very popular based on the well-marked signs and the smooth, wide roads. Coming into what would be the first of many vineyards, we were definitely not disappointed. With vineyards on both sides of our path and the river in sight, we could hardly believe that we were only a little over an hour outside the city. From here, there was a realization that we were in for a magical ride, being basically the only tourists on the entire trail, and especially considering it was well into November already. The number of times that we found ourselves stopping and taking photos and videos even before we even reached the first village, we knew we were in for a long day. It was going to take us much longer than anticipated. Massive abbeys in the distance and so many churches along the way. We were definitely tempted to stop and visit, which we did for some on our side of the river. However, it should be noted that ferry boats were unavailable during the fall, so we could not venture to the other side of the Danube you are still able to take in the sights from a distance. I kept finding myself being caught out of breath just by the sheer beauty of the fall colors that came around every corner. A nice break from writing came in the form of signs along the route noting historical facts about buildings, the vineyards, and the general area we were in such as a Napoleon defeat in this small village or where previous battles were fought and won. Even dating the churches back to the 1100s. Just some very great history to breed. Passing through Dernstein is perfect for a visit. There you can also tour the castle as well as some of the local churches. Since the bike path also merged with the street at certain times and places, we had to be pretty careful with oncoming traffic and passing cars. When biking through some of the smaller villages, be sure to stop along the way and take in your surroundings, whether it be the churches, the river, stopping for a snack, just take in your surrounding. The ornate detail that went into the construction of some of these buildings in the towns and churches was very beautiful and mesmerizing.
pleasant surprise when the sun decided to grace us with its presence, only adding to the beautiful light and fall colors. Since we did make this trip during the off season, we packed a light snack in our backpack, which ended up being a great idea since a lot of the shops were closed. Riding through these beautiful and vast vineyards, you can definitely tell that it's a popular tourist site. And I can only imagine what it would be like during peak season. We were definitely tempted to stop for some Austrian wine. We did note that some of the vineyards were open during our bike ride, however, I would think more during peak season is the time to stop in for a taste. Lusendorf, another very unique and quaint town worth stopping in as it is surrounded by vineyards on both sides in and out from the bike path but also a very unique church worth stopping in as well. We definitely stopped for quite a while in the village of Spitz, as it was very picturesque with the church although it was under construction, but the views behind it and the hills were absolutely beautiful. We found ourselves riding right along the Danube River with the fall colors popping, massive abbeys in the distance, and so many churches along the way. Towards the late afternoon, when our legs were getting pretty tired, it seemed like we were weaving in and out of small villages quite frequently. We didn't take time to stop and explore as much as we wanted to since we were running out of daylight. Biking through some of the narrow cobblestone streets in these villages really gave us authentic European feel. Up in the distance, we could make out what looked like ruins on top of a hill. And as we got closer, we noted that that was the castle ruins of Eichstein. And even closer still, we noted lots of tour buses going up and down. So very popular sight. Riding along the river and into milk as the sun set was absolutely breathtaking and almost distracting from the fact of just how tired our legs actually were. As the sun was setting, we saw the milk abbey in the distance and knew we were almost finished with our Wachau Valley ride. We arrived in Melk just before sunset, spending about three and a half to four hours total biking, keeping in mind that we stopped along the way quite a bit for photos, videos, and reading some of the history. The Abbey on the Hill was just a massive welcome for us into Melk. Before catching our train the next morning, we toured the Abbey at Melk, which is a must visit in our account, as it is right on top of the hillside overlooking the town. Even though our legs were tired and we were exhausted, this day trip through the amazing beauty of the Austrian countryside was the highlight of our trip. We highly recommend it for anyone looking to discover the Wachau Valley. <laughs>